Hey again, I'm Josh. Again, this is a, a new laptop. Everything should be working. Uh, before I get started, I want to let you know that I uh, I work here at New Relic, and my team is hiring. You may have heard that already. Send your resumes. It's pretty awesome. Um, also, Lauren was really serious when she said that you should volunteer. Uh, a couple of days ago, I volunteered to move chairs, and now I'm standing in front of you. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, raise your hand and you too can have your hurriedly prepared talk immortalized forever on YouTube. So, uh, so I'm, I work at New Relic and while I write Ruby code now, before uh, I wrote C Sharp and JavaScript, and one of the things I really like about the JavaScript community is that they um, feel very free in a lot of ways, but in particular they feel very free to rotate out their entire tech stack every six months or so. And <laughs> that sort of freedom offers them the opportunity to explore a lot of new paths, a lot of new ideas, like interesting ways to do dependency management, or really cool ways to architect your application. One of the things that I like the best about the, the JavaScript world, especially the React community, is this uh, architecture called Flux which is from Facebook. Here's what Facebook says. Flux is an architecture for creating data layers in JavaScript applications. It was designed at Facebook along with a React view library and it places a focus on creating explicit and under, whatever. That's a lot of words, okay? Flux is about managing state in your application. If your application stays easy to reason about, your application is easy to reason about. If you've ever encountered Flux in any way, you may have seen this diagram before, but this is the Flux architecture kind of in a flow chart. Um, the idea here is that your application, your views, take interaction from the user. They codify that interaction into an action, pass that action to a, uh, an object called a dispatcher, which then passes the action on to one of many stores who modify their internal state and then notify the view of a change in state so the view can re-render. Um, this is a pretty simplified view of what an actual Flux application looks like. Over time, they tend to get a little bit more complicated. There are a lot of stores and a lot of views all sort of talking to each other. And, you know, as your application grows, your Flux layer tends to sort of sprawl out and take up more and more of your JavaScript code. Um, your state gets spread out all over the place in a bunch of different stores. Um, and really, state is kind of the problem for any application. Um, Managing state, like the, the difficulties in managing state is not a new idea. Fred Brooks, back in 1986, Fred Brooks wrote The Mythical Man Month, among other things, wrote that computers have very large number of states. This makes conce conceiving, describing, and testing them hard. Software systems have orders of magnitude more states than computers do. Again, that's a lot of words. Let me see if I can find my enhance button. Managing state is really freaking hard, right? <laughs> sort of whatever. He, he, that's, what he, that's what he meant. Um, so one of, the, one of the ways that the JS community has sort of uh, reacted to this sprawling state in a Flux architecture is a new library called Redux, which takes some of the best ideas of Flux and distills them down into three basic principles. Um, the first one is there's a single source of truth. Your state does not sprawl out through your application. There's a single store that holds the complete state for your entire app. That state is immutable. It does not change. When you, receive react, when you receive an action from the user, we take that state, copy it, modify the new copy, and return that, and that becomes your new state. The last one is all the changes to your state are made with pure functions. They, the, st the, the functions receive the state as an argument. They receive the action as an argument. They modify a copy of the state and return it with no side effects. And what that comes down to sort of in reality is this modified flowchart for application architecture where you have an app that generates actions as before. Those actions are dispatched through the, the singleton store, processed by a series of reducer functions that generate new state which is then published out to your application through an observer pattern. If you look at that flowchart again, you can see that basically your application breaks down into a couple of pieces your data in the form of state, plus the behavior of your app in the form of actions from the user and reducers that process those actions equal your application. Um, that seems pretty cool. What's up? So, to be clear, is this all happening just in the browser or does it involve back-end states? Uh, 
So the answer is kind of both. Um, most most uh, Flux implementations happen in the browser, but they can also execute on the server. Um, JS community calls that isomorphic applications. So they can, they can happen in both places. Um, so this kind of breakdown of how, what makes up an application seems really cool, but again, there is nothing new under the sun. Uh, in 1976, Nicholas Worth wrote this book, Algorithms Plus Data Structures Equals Programs. That's kind of the same thing we're talking about. That was in 1976. Like we've been reinventing this stuff for decades, but some of it is a pretty cool idea. Now, you're probably thinking, why are you telling me about all this JavaScript? Because this is a Ruby meetup. Um, well, I'm telling you about all this JavaScript because I'm new to Ruby. I've been writing it for only a few months now, and I miss some of the JavaScript stuff. So I decided to write a library as an experiment to see if we could introduce Redux-style one-way data flow into Ruby applications. And that has resulted in a gem called RBDux, which is on GitHub. Um, Let's take one more look at that flowchart. What we're going to do here for the rest of this presentation is show you how you would implement this flowchart in Ruby using RBDux. Um, it's kind of a, a tradition in the JavaScript world to try out a new framework with like a to-do app. Uh, how many people here learned Ruby by writing a blog or learned how to call external services by making a Twitter client? Yeah, so in JavaScript, they make to-do apps. It's just kind of a thing, so that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we need to do is build an action. So in RBDux, we do that by calling rbduxaction.define, and you give it the name of your action. And what this does is it generates a class for you to play with. Um, the class is put in the global space. Um, in this case, we, we made an action called new to do, and we have a new class called new to do action that has three class methods on it. Um, dot empty just gives you an action. If your action, if your user interaction requires no data, if they clicked on a thing and you don't really care, you know, what the button said or what the fields were, you just want to know that they clicked on it, you can generate an empty action. Um, there's a with payload method that allows you to send any object, in this case the string, um, that will be the new to do item. Um, but any object can be passed to the with payload method, and that gives you an action that's filled out with some data. And there's a with error method that takes an error or a string that describes an error or anything else. It's just an object. Put whatever you want to. This is Ruby. We don't care about types. Whatever. Um, the next thing we do, now that we've defined an action, is we want to set up the store with some initial state. And we can do that with rbduckstore.withState. You can pass it a hash um, or really any object, but the hash is kind of the, the standard tradition here. Um, the store is a singleton. It's the singleton interactions are handled for you. Uh, with state is a class method on the store itself, but it handles uh, the singleton, like create, calling, making calls to singleton kind of in the background. So we've got an action to make a new to-do. We have a store with a place uh, in, its, in its state called to-dos that takes a, an array of to-dos that we're going to pass it. Next, we need, to do a, we need to make a reducer. And a reducer takes the action that carries some data from the user and it tells RBDUX how to modify the state in response to that action. Um, and reducers are pure functions. They operate on an immutable state, uh, state hash. So in this case, we have, a, we have a reducer. It responds to new to do action. And it's, you, pass, you give it a block. And the block receives as arguments the current state as well as the action that came to you from the user. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the state and duplicate it. We're going to access the to-dos array that we had built, and we're going to add the payload of the action, which in this case is just a string. And then we're going to return our new modified state copy. Um, the to-do, uh, the, the re reducers receive the entire state unless you tell RBDUX otherwise. Um, that's really unwieldy. You don't want a single reducer that responds to a single action dealing with the entire state hash. So you can give it a slice of the state. In this case, we're going to make the symbol to-dos. And if you give it a RBDUX store to reduce a symbol like that, it will introspect on the state and hand you back just the slice of that state that's described by that symbol. Um, in this case, we're sending it that array of to-dos. And so it's just duplicating that array and then appending the payload of this action onto that new array and returning it. And then RBDUX will handle merging that new copy back into the global state. OK, so we've made some actions. We've initialized the store. We, tell, we told the store how to respond to a, an action. Now what we, we want to do is tell the store what to do, or we want to subscribe to the, the store to say, hey, 
when the state changes, notify my app. And so we just call rbduckstore.subscribe and we pass it, you know, give it a block. We're just going to do a thing that could be render or do a different thing, whatever, whatever you want. Having subscribed to that, we can actually go ahead and run this thing through all the way. So we'll make a new action instance with a payload of add a new to do, and we'll dispatch that through the store, passing in the action. And that's going to run through our reducer, and it's going to produce a new store state that has that add a new to do in the to do's array. One cool thing about this is that having done all those things, the core logic of your application is now fully testable. Um, you don't need to wrap it in a UI. You don't need to do anything like that. Um, you can just say, hey, I know that when I generate this action and pass it to, through my store and it goes through my reducer, it should produce a state that looks a certain way. So that's what we've got here. We, you know, it adds a to-do item. Make an action, dispatch it to the store. Hey, I expect the state to look like this. Easily testable. So that's the basics. Um, one kind of problem that these sort of like one-way data flow applications often run into is that if your reducers are pure and your state is immutable, like how do you make external service calls? How do you talk to a database? How do you talk to a web service? Those kind of calls have, like by definition, they may have side effects. They're not pure. So what do you do? Well, if we look back at the flow chart, we need to find a way somewhere in here to make an impure call to an external service. And one way we can do that is by inserting some logic in between the store and when it passes your action onto the reducer. We do that with middleware. Um, just like Rack or, or a bunch of other apps, RBDux handles middleware, and there are two types. The first one is before middleware, which gives you a chance to interact with the action before it's passed to the, to the reducer. You can write it out to the console, you can modify it, you can intercept it, whatever you want. Um, whatever is returned from this before middleware is passed on to the next middleware in the chain. So each layer of middleware can modify the action and pass it on, pass on the modified action for other middleware to interact with. There's also an after middleware, which happens after the reducers are all called. You, uh, this middleware receives the previous state, the new state, and the action, and you can do whatever you want to with it. In this case, we can put it out to the console so we can see that something has changed. You can write it to a database. You can do whatever you want. So if we want to make a service call, what we can do is use a built-in piece of RBDux middleware called dispatch interceptor. And that takes advantage of a, a special property of the action define method, which allows it to accept an optional block. If, you've turn, if you have configured your RBDux application to use the dispatch interceptor, um, when, it, when RBDux receives an action passed through the store, it checks to see if that action type has defined this dispatch block. If so, it will call this when, this when the action is dispatched through the store. This dispatch interceptor method does not have to be pure. It can make external service calls. So in this case, we're defining two actions. One that represents the user requesting some data, and one that represents the system having received that data externally and is going to pass it on through the rest of the application. Um, so the first one is called get data, and the second one is called data retrieved. But for the get data, we define this block. And what it does is it makes a call to an external service, gets the, the response to that call, it doesn't really matter what it is in this case, then we package that, call, the, that data up into a new action, call, a new data retrieved action with that payload and return it from this block. So in this case, once we make the first call to say, hey, give me some data, this, this middleware will take effect and it, and it basically throws out the first get action or get data call and returns or the get data action and returns the data retrieved action instead. Um, and that way your reducers can, can deal with data coming from external services without ever really having, having ever seen the fact that it went, that data came from somewhere else. Okay, so what if you want to make a really pure, you know, Redux style app and you want to have a truly immutable data store? Well, you can do that with RBDux. Um, it's a pretty new library. There's not a whole lot of advanced tricks, but I guess it's probably 